We are live. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to the show must go on line. Today's guest is Max Crum. How are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I enjoy our flair. Yes, flowers. Slimbo, my co-host, is here to say hi. We are very happy to have you. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Yay. So, you know, dogs will be here. Slimbo, big fan. We will definitely talk about your adorable pup either now or later. But this is a very pup-friendly show. <laughs> thank God. Yes. Mm -hmm. So let's start at the very beginning, a very good place to start. And let's hear your origin story. What got you into theater and singing and all that jazz? Well, so the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents were experimenting on one of the minds. You know, okay, so it's the Mind Stone, right? Yeah. You're saying origin story. Like my... <clears throat> Basically, like, I'm an experiment gone wrong. My powers sort of... Okay, so basically, my boyfriend died, and I brought him back to life, and now I'm living in this weird, like, bubble where... I don't know if I'm, like, aware of, like... Actually, I can't do that. I could just go down a <laughs> rabbit hole about the one. I could literally, like, I really think someone else is doing it. And I think Catherine Hahn's character is a bad guy. Anyway... So I know, okay. Anyway, my- I'm so excited story. about all that. Um, me too. That was a joke for anybody. I'm not actually Wanda. <laughs> um, and that was also like a battering of her origin story that like wasn't even really it. Um, but, so basically I grew up in a household that was very, per, you know, performative. It was, you know, a lot of people, my dad is a director, comedian, my mom is a dancer, singer, actress. And right away, I grew up, my parents owned a theater company, like a community theater company. They never had like a spot that was like a building they owned, but they always had this, you know, we would rent out different theaters and different places and do shows. And so I, as long as I can remember, theater and Broadway and movies of old Broadway musicals and things like that and, you know, bootlegs even, um, were a part of my story, right? Like I just, it, that was it. My mom was the star of all my dad's shows um, and she was so great. I just remember my mom being so stunning and so captivating on stage and just so incredible. She was like Reno Sweeney and anything goes. Um, she was little she was mary and little mary sunshine i remember she was uh i forget who she was but she was like in rumors and i was like oh my gosh she's so funny i think she played chris and then she was in um these are like you know just community theater shows but my dad directed them all and my mom was just great and so eventually when i was six i was like i want to be in a show i want to be on the stage now because as far as I, like as long as i could remember they were their friends picking me up from school and taking me to the theater because they were already there and I would do my theater or my school, my schoolwork in the back of the theater in the back of the house watching rehearsals. So it just became a sort of very natural progression to want to be on stage. And so I was actually, my very first show was Anything Goes. Um, and my mom was Reno Sweeney and my dad created these like kids roles that was like two little sailor kids. And so I had like a little tap number in with the angels, like a little, it was just cute. Um, and so my love for performing and for theater started there because I just remember making my parents laugh was huge. Like making my dad laugh because he was very funny and he was a director and my mom, you know, I looked up to her, some of them as performers. So whenever I made them laugh, I was like, oh, I could, okay, if I can make them laugh, they're really serious critics. So then being in front of an audience, that was very electric to me. I loved attention. And so it was a good way to channel my you know, undiagnosed ADHD. But that was the origin. That is like the impetus of it all. And then it just, I, from then on, my life can be like, I can reference, oh, that was when I was in this show. It was just shows, you know, shows, shows, shows. Show, show, shows. That's what we're all about here. <laughs> B-way show. Huh? Huh? <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. Well, that's a great, WandaVision origin story and Max Crumb origin story. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, and first of all, I do have to say, I love when people, yes, and that, and take the superhero route. So thank you. Okay, good. Oh, great. I got a good one. 
Yeah. I'm a huge superhero nerd. And so I thought that's a fun way of combining my two loves. And mm -hmm. Well, really, my origin story is, see, now I can just play a game where I say, or I say the origin story and you have to guess. But okay, let's see if you can get this one. Okay. So I am a botanist. <laughs> And I like fell into my plants. And now I'm like, you know, if, a plant person. Slim Slim thinks that you're uh that you're in one of your favorite roles that you want to do. If we're doing like comics meets super meets Broadway, which would be Whoa. little shop. But Ooh, yeah, that'd be good. Do you like that? But the actual one. Is that Poison Ivy? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Dr. Pamela Isley. Oh, thank you. But okay. you're, of course, of course, yeah. Okay. I was trying to like also yes and that. And no, then that I was, was like, good. I also... Little Shop. It's actually, I would love to play Audrey. <gasps> Ooh. I would love that. So, okay. Also, hello, everyone. I see oh. Haley. I see Andy. If y'all have questions, comments, please comment below. We will get to them throughout. We yes. love all of you. Hello, everybody. Yay. Okay, perfect. So then next after this growing up theater thing, I feel like we have to talk about Grease. You're the one that I want because oh. it was, it's kind of funny. Like I grew up, I watched that show. I remember voting for you and then like there you were on Broadway and then we met at Emoji Land. So it's just, it feels very full circle for me. What was that experience cool. like for you? How cool. Well, first and foremost, thank you so much. Like that means so much to me to hear that you voted for me. That's like cool. Cause you're like part of the, you're part of the reason I get to do what I do. So genuinely like I'm hugging you through the, yeah. Thank you. Um, that was, uh, Greece was like a, such a whim. It was such a wonderful experience that was so hard and so, um, First of all, just the TV show, because it's all in it's such an experience. Like the TV show, um, I auditioned for on a whim. My roommate told me about the audition the night before. And I was like, oh, what? They're doing what? Like, that's crazy. And then I just remember I couldn't sleep that night. And something in me was like, go to that audition. Like, see what, see when it is. And I looked it up and I was like, it's literally right now. Like, it, the line starts at 5 a.m. And it's over, it's like down in Venice. I was like, hmm, oh, whatever. And so I just like got some Red Bulls. And I was, you know, I did just turned 21. No, I wasn't even, yeah, yeah, I just turned 21. And like, I was just like, I don't care. And so I just went and got in line and auditioned and that, you know, everything from that point on, like my life has been different from like that one decision. Um, and it's wild to think about it that way. But uh, yeah, so I just remember being really tired and being like, okay, you know, not thinking too much of it, just being, uh, coming from a theater family too, like I just was very, I just knew that it was like, you know, things aren't always about actors. Things aren't always about you know, I was more excited to get into Broadway and theater and figure that out or figure out, um, you know, how TV works. You know, I had a lot of it. I was excited to perform as well. I just knew I could fit into this somehow. It wasn't really about, oh, me, 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 if that makes sense. I was more like, oh, this, this is something I could do. Interesting. I can sing. I can, but, but you know, I'm not going to win this because, like, I'm not Danny. So I was like, this is going to be fun. And I think that attitude really got me through so much of the show. It, you know, um, but from that initial audition, once I sang in front of the cameras in front of Kathleen Marshall, David Ian, and um, Jim Jacobs, then the cameras started following me back to the waiting room and then everywhere. And then that was when it was like, okay, like they must think I'm so weird or something. Like, you know, I was like, I don't know what's going on. And, uh, but that snowballed into the reality show, which was such a crazy experience in and of itself. And um, that was like so much fun being on the reality show. Um, but it was, uh, I don't know, like what's the, do I just keep going with this? Yeah, I mean, oh, okay, okay, okay. I just, I want to like hear about it. Were there any interesting moments that like specifically stand out for you now? 
time. Oh my gosh. Um, I guess the fact that Billy Bush hosted it was kind of weird. Um, if you know who that is. Uh, uh, but it, I guess like stuff that like sticks out to me is like Georgia Stitt, who was our vocal coach, who is Jason, you know, she's, she's first and foremost, an amazing person and a crazy good, like musical theater writer, musician, teacher, maestra. Uh, but she also happens to have a little hubby named Jason Robert Brown and they were really cool. And like, she was our vocal coach on the show and she was somebody who I really, really, um, gravitated towards in rehearsals because she was always for the performers, you know, the TV producers, it was a little bit like, what's going to give us the best, most outrageous show? Like, can these people sing high notes? Can they do crazy stuff? And I remember the first week I had summer of 69 that I had to sing live and, uh, we had been singing so much, practicing all the like opening numbers, whatever it was, whatever, whatever. And I remember I got the song. We only had a week to learn them. And Georgia, we were in rehearsals and I was like nailing it. And I was like, woo, woo, woo. And she was like, we're going to take it down a half step. And I was like, wait, excuse me. Like why? I can say, and she was like, no, it's not about that. Like it's about you have these cool, rich tones in the verses. You're still going to get those notes. You know, it's not, and, and, and you're going to sound really good. I was like, okay. And I hadn't really thought about things like that. I was a stupid kid who did not go to college for musical theater. I mean, listen, I went to, I was in choir all through high school and middle school and church and stuff. So I knew, I, I know music, but it was more about like, I hadn't really thought about things like catering to myself via key or that, 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 you know, I just sort of always was like, let me insert myself into other people's stuff and see where I fit in. And again, that narrative with Georgia, she was the first person that I looked up to that was kind of like a mentor in a way that would kind of inspire me to cater things more towards myself and understand what my strengths are and how to push, you know, push those to the forefront. And I really credit her coaching in a way to my, you know, transformation on the show. Like she helped me kind of realize I can portray myself in certain ways and certain things like that. And so that really stuck out to me. Uh, it sticks out to me in the show and that it was so much fun. And then the other side of it, I guess that I will say stuck out was the fans. It was like, um, unlike anything I'd ever experienced before. Like I can't watch a reality show competition without, you know, my heart kind of like going whenever the lights go down for elimination and stuff. Cause it's just, you got to, you have to have like gone through that to know it's just such a really crazy feeling. And like the fans were, it was something like, you know, it was very Mickey Mouse Club, the reality show. And so whenever we would come out, it, they would like announce us and like the fans would like scream and stuff. And the thing that really was kind of so um, transformative in a way and like really special and cool was that like each week, like, my screams were louder and louder. And it was like this realization and understanding of what was happening around me because we were kept in a bubble and we didn't know what was going on. You know, we weren't allowed to see social media or do all that. There wasn't really even social media. So this was a million years ago. But like, it was it was that sort of thing, the connection with the audience and the, what was, that was all kind of really special about the reality show part. Mm. It was so cool being able to see the fans who were there interact with you, but also like seeing your progression and even like whatever progression means, but hearing like the feedback and what did they call you? Like slacker, Danny? Oh my gosh. Yeah. And I asked <laughs> Kathleen Marshall, I was like, why did you call me that? And she was like, well, we couldn't call you stoner, Danny. I'm <laughs> <laughs> I was like, excuse me? Like, all right. It worked out. You're not wrong. Um, yeah. yeah it did, it did. Oh my God. That's so but, funny. But that was a really wonderful, crazy experience that then led to uh, a beautiful theater career. And now I'm just grateful and grateful. And I love it. Anyway, <laughs> that, that led to Broadway, which then was like great and ridiculous. Doing Grease for an entire year was so much fun. But, I, you know, that's something I got through. It was a lot of work. It was like two and a half hours of crazy dancing and like, yeah, that was just so much. It was so much because it was, I'd never in my life been in like, I'd never been like the lead lead of such a crazy big dance production. Like I'd been in a lot of shows that were like 
you know, but that was also like Broadway. It was so much. It was a lot at once. <laughs> but I loved it. But I had so much fun, you know. Awesome. Haley yeah. saying, revive Greece, but with stoner Danny. <laughs> oh, my God. For sure. <laughs> so what was that like, though, going from these two larger than life situations? One where you're going through this process live, but with this like studio audience and also people voting from home. But it's a reality show and it's Greece. And then actually being the lead on a Broadway yeah. show in Greece. The... That was easier than the reality show. Like, cause you know, I've been doing, like I said, I've been doing theater my whole life. So it was like, well, I could do the show part. And it was just more of like the, the, the transition was interesting because it was like this really surreal, larger than life experience that then led to like, oh my gosh, Broadway is actually just community theater, you know, with flashy lights. And these people are all just really normal, regular, cool peeps. And I somehow thought it would be on the same scale as like TV, you know? Um, but that was probably like the most, um, the most sort of jarring thing that in a way was, I was happy for it because it reminded me more of like what I was used to growing up was like the, the grind of things and how hard people work that, and, and it's not about the, glitz and the glam except it's totally about the glitz and the glam like when it's time that's theater you know it's like uh, okay okay so that was that was crazy that was really crazy and it, um it was also crazy because it was like i'm such a theater lover that i was well aware that laura and i were like hopping on this scene and i wanted to be respected you know i wanted to be taken seriously as an actor and it was really hard in mentally to get past what was happening because I really enjoyed that I won the Grace reality show and that I was get got to do all this. But at the same time, it was a little bit of me that was like, I mean, I would judge me a little bit. So like, I was nervous people. Yeah, you know, so that was like, that was, I was nervous. I was nervous people would judge me and that was not the case at all, but it was definitely something that, um, you know, there were people out there in the woodworks, you know, but it, but it was just, it was something that I had to personally get over because I just, I wanted to feel like I earned it, my, you know, and I totally did. And it's taken me like, it's taken me a while to realize that. But like in that, in that time, I didn't know I was such a, you know, little kid and I just didn't know that I earned it and that I was like worth it and awesome back then, you know? And so that was something it was like an emotional change within me. Like I said, it wasn't, I was never like, oh my God, I'm on Broadway. I, I don't think I ever remember that. I just remember being like, cool, theater, right. I know how to do this. This feels comfortable. Everything else gives me panic attacks, kind of, you know, all the press and all the, all that stuff. Like that was the stuff that I was like, this is crazy. Like, I don't know about this. And so it was nice to like learn and be launched into that and be forced out of my comfort zone a lot, which that's what I look at that experience as like I surfed this wave and it was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you finally realized that you did earn it and you deserve to be here. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. And it's also so interesting to think like now in your career when there is social media and you can get that instant feedback versus back then. I mean, Right. Look, social media has these pros and cons because the good news and the the positive is like oh that that feels so good i'm kind of glad in a way there wasn't that yeah because that, that like, negativity is like anxious yeah yeah but you know i kind of dodged a bullet there i got to sort of like learn and and make mistakes in in, in secret <laughs> perfect you know yeah but on the other side I, it, it wasn't i would like to talk about how much fun it was to be in Greece on Broadway. Like it was like a dream come true. We got okay. to move to New York. Um, and by the way, I had somebody, the thing that also made it extremely easy or unbearable was I had somebody by my side the whole time who knew exactly what I was going through, which was Laura Osmus. So, you know, we had each other's backs the entire time. And that was sort of, you know, she was my rock back then. And it was just, I couldn't have done it without her. She couldn't have done it without me. And we helped each other through a lot in that time. And same with Nate, like that, we were like a, a little trio, Nate's her husband, we were like a, they really took care of me. 
Um, but on that side of it, it was really great to have Laura there because it felt like an old war buddy, like a really like a best friend in rehearsal. And so it was like, okay, we're doing this. At least we have, you know, this. I was like, if anything else, but the Broadway cast was amazing. Our original Broadway cast was crazy. We, Lindsay Mendez Broadway debut. She was our, my jam. Uh, it wasn't Robin Herter's Broadway debut, but she was Marty. Um, Jenny Powers was our Rizzo. Crazy powerhouse cast. Um, Matt Saldivar was Kaniki. We had, I mean, who do we have in there? A lot of people have been through that production in and out. But like, you know, just to name a few, those are like our really cool peeps. Also Daniel Everidge, who has gone on to do wonderful things. Um, and all the people I'm not naming in the U.S. Emily Paget, she's like was our swing, and she's now like literally nominated for Tonys and starring in things. Matt Heidzik was this male swing. He's also a huge, you know, it's just really cool and like to know, like to look back and think, wow, all those people were in the same room with me, and they were so cool. Like I got to be in the room with them. <laughs> um, and we did Grease, uh, and it was, uh, but yeah. It was really amazing. I was just, just thinking probably the Tonys is the coolest thing, um, being on the Tonys and performing in Radio City. If, you know, if there is one moment, the Tonys and getting to perform at Radio City was like, check, whoa, you know, <laughs> out of this world. Yeah. And it was crazy, yeah. Is it crazy the fact that you do have this, like, almost blog of your life in these years that you can go back and look at in this like high quality video. It's like, oh, this is what I looked like then. And this is what I did then. And oh, this is what I sounded like. Yeah, I kind of hate that. Oh, Cause no. also like, I watch those, I watch my like, I watch those and it's like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Like I was having so much fun, but I was, you know, like there's, there's certain things. It's like, sometimes I wish it would go away, but I'm glad, I'm glad it lives on. Like, sure. It's kind of crazy. It's like a really crazy thing. Like it's, yeah. um, yeah. You know, that it, sounds crazy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's also part of the way oh. like, Oh no, no, I'm so sorry. Please you go, please. No, I don't even. <laughs> it's this, internet thing you know trying to like you don't want dead air but you don't want to step on right, people's right, toes. Right, right, right. anyway i was just gonna say that i feel like i could talk about this all day but also you've had such a wonderful career that it would be a sin to focus on this only so <laughs> yes it's amazing hearing about Georgia and then Jason Robert Brown because you worked with him and it's also now the Alley trim of it all because I right. love Alley. I love 13, the two of you working together. I mean, talk about all that. Okay. Well, like, so, um, so basically my, I took like a little break after Greece boom, boom, and went to LA. I like did some, I thought I really, I really thought I was like, I'm going to like be a movie star. And then that just did not happen. I had terrible management and I had a really good friend that was like, go back to New York. What are you, what? And I was like, you're right. And so <laughs> I was like, this is cool. Like I got to be an easy A, like I filmed that, like that was really fun, but like, oh. I was just a small part. Uh, and so I came back to New York and then I got I got back into things by doing, um, what was the first thing I did? Oh, I did a show called The Fucking Up Everything that got changed into Brooklyn Crush, uh, which was with George Salazar and Jason Gote and Don Campo, a lot of cool peeps. Anyway, but like, so that was like, I started like doing lots of off-Broadway stuff, but the, the um, Working with Allie, that was like through a fr like um, I don't even know. I think I was at like a an event and I met a dir the director and we really hit it off and so we like kind of did a reading of this thing and then we did the show and it was like meeting Allie Trim was like oh my gosh because so the writers of so we did Evolution of Man that's an off Broadway show we did in I don't remember when two thousand nineteen and eighteen. 2018, no, 2018. Um, working with Ali Trim is amazing. She's amazing. Uh, the writers of the show we did together, The Evolution of Man, wrote, the, the guy who wrote the book, wrote the book to 13. So that's how the whole Jason Robert Brown thing comes into play. And then, so that was like, 
being reintroduced back into that family. I had a, I had been, seen Jason here and there and Georgia here and there for certain things, but that was where we kind of really reconnected because Jason came to see the show. And he was like, wait, you guys are hilarious together. Um, and so that was where the, I then got um, into The Connector, which is Jason's newest um, musical, which is being directed by Daisy Prince, who's like obviously a legend, Hal Prince's daughter. And she directed Songs for a New World and Last Five Years. Um, but that, so like where I'm at now in terms of like the art I get to create is like where I, exactly where I want to be. Like, I feel I started this thing, this whole career off, like showing people I can do something, but that, that it was just, so not even fully who I am, but like a piece, you know, whereas I feel no shade, but some kind of shade a little bit to Laura, like she was in her wheelhouse for Greece. She got to absolutely showcase everything she did. And I was always a little bit gay mad about that. Like, oh, whatever. Like, ew. Like you literally get to be a princess. That's so easy. Like I am a literal character actor playing Danny Zuko. Like, bye. And so I was like, oh, good for you. But like very loving. And so now it feels like, oh, I'm being seen, like, and I'm, you know, I get to work with and be a part of these, like, weird, crazy things, which is, like, where I want to be. And so, like, I love, 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 love Jason Robert Brown, and I love Allie Trim, and working on all of these new, new weird musicals is just something that I've always, like, thought about as a little kid, like, making up new and different things. And so, I mean, listen, anytime I get to get in a room and play with people that are that talented, it's like, because I've obviously, like everyone else, looked up to Jason Robert Brown so much. And I mean, I listened to, I, I saw Allie Trim in, uh, I didn't see 13, but I saw her in, um, in, in Bye Bye, Bye Birdie. Birdie. Yeah. And she was just so good anyway, but. That was great. Working with them is absolutely great. And I absolutely love Allie Trim. She's one of my besties. <laughs> I love all of that. <clears throat> it's so funny, though, because it is kind of going back through my, like, teenage years right now. Because 13 was the first show I ever saw in previews. And then again, when it was, like, open on Broadway. And to see a show, like, cut or a song cut, you're right. like, wait, what? And then I saw Bye Bye Birdie. Basically, I'm a big fan of like you and your squad and Allie and Jason, all of them. Oh, yeah, me too. I mean, oh my gosh, I, I, I'm, I'm so freaking grateful. Like, oh, are you kidding me? Like, this is a really cool story. I, I want to tell this because this is like you said, squad, and it made me like feel like okay, this is like really cool. So, in I don't know if you know songs for a new world very well, but okay, so. Actually, no, that, I won't tell that story. <laughs> I just realized it's like, I don't know if I have like that person's like, you know, like so, never mind. But it's a really great story that's so meaningful and beautiful. You just have no idea. Okay, I'm going to tell it. So basically, so, <laughs> so basically in Jason's show, I had, I have this big, huge song that just, uh, yeah, it wasn't like working in some of the first workshops. And so the, it was cut. And in then we did another workshop. Jess Malaski is in The Connector. Okay, Jess Malaski sings Stars in the Moon. And she's in um, the original uh, Songs for New World. Anyway, so she's in this. And I was already like, oh my gosh, you're so cool, Rick. You're so cool. And there was this really cool moment, and this is just like one of the coolest moments ever, ever. And the, the cast from this show, which is like such a cool cast, uh, we were all out to, you know, like having dinner um, because we had like our performance for the show, the, the workshop or whatever it was the next night. And um, I had like a little song and I was like, that's okay. Like Jason's writing it and like, it's okay, you know. Um, and we did the workshop and then I remember it was a couple of months and then there was another one that was like, a, okay, we're going to go to Vassar and like really work on this for a week. So we're going to put you guys up there and really work on it. So we did, we went up there and I was like in the seven, uh, or I was like in the Seven Eleven by the, whatever it was, we we're all getting food before rehearsal. And Jason comes up to me and goes, your song's really hard. 
I'm sorry. And I was like, what? He was like, it's just, it's a difficult song. So I'm sorry. And then he just walks off and I was like, oh, okay. Like, he was like, it's just like, he, it wasn't like, you know, he was just more like, it's like, cause you know, he's just very creative and weird. And he was like, so I don't know. And I was like, did you just say my song? I didn't even hear like anything else. I was like, did you guys, did someone hear, did anyone hear that? And so of course we go into this rehearsal he pulls me aside um, and is like, oh, hey, I'm going to like teach you. Like, they're working on this. I'm going to teach you a song. And of course, you know, I'm like inside, like, oh, my God. Like, Jason Jeremy's taking me to this other room to like play me this song. And I, like, I hope I can do this song. And so, you know, he plays it. I love it so much. I can't believe it's the song, you know. He said it's the queerest song he's ever written, which I love. And it absolutely is. Um, it's like Kate Bush mixed with Bruno Mars. It's like the weirdest song. But so I, he gave it to me and I was determined to learn it that day. So I went and like locked myself in a room and learned it and learned and learned it so we could do the most work on it, you know? Cause I was like, this is such an honor. I can't drop the ball on this opportunity. Like I can't show up to rehearsal tomorrow, not knowing this. I want them to get this musical going. And we were waiting on that song. So it was kind of like, I need to like help. So I did that, came back to rehearsal. I had a really good run through of it in front of everybody. We got to show everybody. I remember feeling so proud. Like it was like Jay at the piano and like me with the music stand singing for the cast. And then I remember I sat down and it was this really cool moment. We sang it for everyone. They loved the song. And I'd never experienced that before in terms of, I've been in original things, but I'd never had somebody write a song for me in my vein of whatever, because like, you know, he's like, yeah anyway it's beautiful and so i get a text from from uh one of our castmates that was a video of that and it was like oh if, just in case you wanted a video of the first time you sang your jrb song in front of your cast and i was like ah! and then we all went out to drinks again and jess malaski was toasting everybody and she said um she was it was something like and i was drinking water and she was like you have a lot of, and she was like, that's good that you're drinking water because you have a brand name, Jason Robert Brown. Like it was just such a, and she was like, and you, and she's came up to me and she was like, and you really did that, man. Like you really learned that. And that's cool. And I remember thinking like, yo, I'm in, these people are so cool. And anyway, that, that just made me think of that. And I love them. And I can't wait to do the connector one day. People are going to love this show. It's so it's like Daisy and Jason going back to their roots, like in a way of, or Jason is really, I'm like, anyway, I'm not, that's, but it's beautiful. It's a lot of fun. I love it. Wow. Thank you for sharing that story. I love hearing these behind the scenes ones. Yeah. That's, that's a really cool, yeah. Really cool story. Awesome. And Slimbo, there must be a postman going by or something because this is like bark o'clock. <laughs> I wish I brought a treat with me right here that I could calm him down. He'll be fine. Um, okay. uh, we will talk. Let's take a quick break from musicals because we need to talk all about Emoji Land, and we will. And Haley, I know, would kill me if we didn't talk about Emoji Land. But let's talk about your pup. Tell us all about. Oh, so cute. And I love Birdie. the video okay. in the snow. Okay. I will. So I have an 11 year old Labrador. Her name is Birdie Sue Ellen Crum. Um, she is the love of my life. She's my best friend in the whole world. And she's an angel sent from heaven to bless everybody that she comes in contact with. And that's all I can say. I mean, it's just, she's been the best. Dogs are the best. It's okay that you're barking. <laughs> but anyway, I got her um, and I got her. 11 years ago and I've had her since she was a puppy. And it's truly, it's like one of those, like she's my my dog. Yeah, and I love her. And she loves the snow right now. She's really enjoying it. She loves. Oh, so, so, so cute. I mean, having, having Slimbo, especially during the pandemic, like on one hand, it, <laughs> on one hand, it's trying to do interviews and he's just barking. But on the other side of it, there was a moment yesterday that I was so anxious just about life. We're in a pandemic. Everything's yeah. stressful. And he just like felt that and he like laid on me and put his chest, his his face on my chest. And like I just calmed down and it was magical. It was like, wow, that is the power of having a dog. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. And especially if you're in tune with your dog. 
absolutely beautiful. I mean, I my dog is very similar like that. She can she sniffs out everything and sees everything. Like she'll make sure everything's okay. Oh, dogs are the best. Yay, yay, dog talk. Okay, perfect. So, Slimbo. Hi, bud. He's he's right outside the door looking at me and then turning back around being like, but I must bark. If I don't bark, what's going to happen? So I was hoping that we could. Can you hear me OK, though? Or is it yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, because Haley made a comment earlier that I really want to bring in um, and talk about as much as you feel comfortable. But Haley just said, I just want to say that it made my non-binary heart so happy when you recently came out as non-binary, Max. We love you so much. <gasps> Yay! Oh, what up? Thanks. And yeah, yeah, um, that's oh, that's really cool. That means a lot. That's that's part of the reason I like wanted to come out as non-binary is to like kind of be representation for like people like me that and I, I'm trying to be what I needed as a kid and you know out there in the world I guess you know but that's that's um that's something that for me it was I grew up very um Christian so it was like a while before I felt comfortable to a come out or b come out as because you know I already come out I already dealt with all that so coming out as non-binary was just something I felt absolutely necessary and that upon so much research and so many more resources and more people getting to know people it was something that i felt like you know i couldn't not that i was hiding but i i felt that i was hiding in um i can hide and be like yo if i'm a male i'm a guy but i've you know i've never felt that way and it's not something that i've just never felt like oh i'm a man oh i'm a woman i've always felt like i'm both and i'm not either and so truly the thing that helped me come to this decision was I did a workshop, this is so funny, of, of course, of a new musical called Here and There, but T-H-E-I-R. And it's about this person's journey through discovering that they're non-binary. And it's played by this amazing actress, actor named Kat Griffin. And actress, actor, they're all of the things. And it's like, a beautiful story and it just really I got to meet so many people um, that were just a part of the queer community and part of the trans community and the non-binary community that opened my like it was like <gasps> I felt like oh my gosh like this room is this is like this is like my people like you know and so that was an experience that really deep deeply affected me and I it really helped me and shape my I guess, coming out, that's all. <laughs> and I think it's important. I personally believe I don't, you know, I don't believe in that, you know, yeah, I could go on. Well, I just think it's beautiful that you are trying to be what you wanted to have someone as a role model when you were a kid and you're being that for people and for people of all ages because everyone has their own journey and finds out about who they are really to themselves at whatever part of their lives it happens. Right. And Absolutely. And it's part of the narrative too of like, you're never too old, you're never too young to like, it's like be yourself. Someone just tried to call me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh no, <laughs> I can't hear you. <laughs> that was the FBI being like, this conversation's done. <laughs> we believe in the binary okay click now um what were we yeah, yeah that's all that's i i what were we saying just it's good to be yourself my name yes. is shoshana i wear roses i wear flowers that's who i feel like it really is it really is important and, and you know it's just so important to take care of yourself and be who you are and not really make it about what other people think it's really just so important to do that couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah, of course. Thank you for asking. And mm -hmm. moi, Haley. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Such a big fan. Such a big fan. So let's get into the emoji land of it all. How did you get involved? Tell us about your character and so, riding around on a hoverboard. Oh my God. Okay. So basically, I 
how did I get involved? So I know Tom Caruso, who is the director. And I've worked with him many times before and with in, in congruence with Leslie Margarita. So like I'm, I'm usually, Tom is very funny director. He's a hilarious person and he like has his gaggle of crazy comedians that he, you know, puts in things. He's like, right, listen, listen, listen. These weird people can develop your musical, trust me. And we do, you know, <laughs> we do. It's just, you know, musicals are hard to fund. No, but so I knew Tom, I don't remember what I did. I think I did like a reading of a musical called Snow Way Out. And then we did Matthew McConaughey versus the devil together at the Fringe Festival in, uh, or I don't know, what's the other one? New York. New York Theater Workshop. It's like the Fringe and the, Nymph. It, it was Nymph. It was Nymph. So at Nymph, Nymph, love you, Nymph. I don't think Nymph exists anymore. But now it's, <laughs> but what exists anymore? Is everyone wearing pants? No. If you're watching this right now and you're wearing pants, why? Unless you're in public. Uh, and then thank you. But so we did Matthew McConaughey versus the Devil, which was a really funny, funny, funny musical at Nymph. And so I love Tom and he, they did Emoji Land at Nymph. But I was not a part of that. Um, and so I remember being like, but I think I was busy. I better have been. No, I'm just kidding. And so I was like, hey, I heard Emoji Land was coming to off Broadway because I had been, I'd seen it and I'd been friends with Josh Lehman and Leslie Margarita. And I was like, you guys, what is this going on? I want to be in it. And so I, you know, I, I just told them that. And I was like, you know, maybe say something. And then, you know, I, I, I had a conversation with Tom. We kind of like talked about it. I was like, can I please, I would love to be, you know, anything in it. He's like, would you want to, okay, listen, listen. Would you want to do this part? And I was like, yes, I said I would do anything. And so he was like, I think you have to like be on a hover. And I was like, yes, I will be on a hover. Yes, please just like, let me do this. And he was like, cause like, I really think you and Leslie and Josh. And I was like, yes, Tom, yes. And so um, that was, it was like, I'm grateful, but that was it. And so that was just like show up, hang out with your friends and be crazy. But the hoverboard of it all, day one, they had me in rehearsals on the hoverboard. I had three different hoverboards I could choose from. Um, and I chose kind of like this, like the, like the sexiest one that seemed most like sturdy, honestly, because I was like, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm going to break. Like, you know, before, <laughs> I was like, I need to go to yoga because I feel like a bunch of glass stacked upon itself. And if I fall, I will shatter. So I started doing yoga again. And then I was like, okay. And they had me in pads and everything and like a helmet. It was the funniest thing. And I was just zooming around in the background while everybody was like, for like, every day, like every day. Cause I was like, I'm going to learn this. If I do this, I'm going to learn this and look cool. Like I'm not gonna, I am not gonna not. And so I just really did. I got like, I was eventually like maybe like two weeks in, people started to be like, hey, or not even two weeks, like a week. They'd be like, hey, or and I would show them like a trick I could do with this or that. And that was so much fun. That was like, you know, I like also like that I got to play the villain. It was like kind of fun and to sort of switch that up and be on a hoverboard and like really see how that informed my, you know, I could like zoom around and he just became this like really weird guy. But it was, it was that emoji land for me. was like hanging out with all these really wonderful, amazingly talented people, which I find myself over and over in these casts. And I'm so grateful because it's like, it's so cool to just be in the room with those people and play off of them. It's so cool. Uh, but that was just fun. The whole show was ridiculous. It was absolutely ridiculous. To anybody who saw it, you know, like it was ridiculous. And we loved how ridiculous it was. And like, so, um, and in the best way, I don't mean, you know, I mean like that show was lovely. That music was incredible. Go stream the album now. That music is like, whew, Laura Shine and Keith Harrison are superb. It's crazy. Yeah, those are the so writers. So good, so many bops. And just like you said, the cast, it was like this person after this person. Oh, yeah. Absurd. Yeah. So good. Little little fun fact. Um, the kiss and Harada and I shared at the end, um, like we threw that in. <laughs> 
I was like, what if? And, they were like, <laughs> and we did it and they were like, oh yeah. And it was funny. <laughs> Obsessed. Obsessed. Yeah. That show was so much fun. I it was grateful I got to see. I like sat down and saw the last preview and then covered opening night. And right. so much fun to see that and that opening night party. Like it was off Broadway, but that felt like a proper opening a night. Big bro- yeah, that was that was a bash. It was fun. So I saw the last preview of that, but I saw the first preview of Be More Chill, which I heard you were at too. Oh yeah, I was. Um, yeah, uh, I was there, and it was great. I had to. I was gonna say hi to everybody too afterwards. I got one of those special beanies. You have your beanie? Yeah, I have. I almost sold it, and I was like, no, I'm gonna <laughs> keep it. Like, I almost sold it because I was like, what? Maybe I'm gonna save it and sell it one day because that'll be. Cause like I love them, but like I don't know if like I want to frame that. You know, I'll sell that. I'm gonna listen, Jen Tepper. If you ever get a hold of this video, you would sell it too. Okay, <laughs> just kidding. You wouldn't. You would be the show. Sure. <clears throat> so if you're watching and you really want that nice purple, yeah. So listen, I'm saying not to say this. <laughs> She's gonna put a link in the bio. I'm selling it. Okay. <laughs> Just kidding. No, but that's I was there and I loved it. My friend, um, my friend Marcus, who plays the drums for them, gave me a ticket, and it was awesome. But also, I love that whole cast. I, um, I got to be in um, a musical opposite Lauren Marcus called Beatsville. That was really cool, um, and so it was really cool to see her in her Broadway debut because it was like we just done a show together and like Be More Chill was blowing up. Like that was like such a crazy moment. That was such a cool moment for all of them and for Broadway and uh, it was cool. I just love hearing how many different shows you've been a part of and new Broadway pieces because just that creative process of doing the workshops and trying to find the life of a story and then doing the story either off Broadway or Broadway. What's that whole process like? Um, it's actually, it's, it's everything. You know what I mean? Like it's the best. Like I don't, I don't remember the, A, I don't remember the last time I, like I think I did the Fantastics off Broadway and that was the last time I did a musical that was like already a show. Like where I knew the show, I knew the music and I was like, oh, okay, I can, bring myself to this you know but everything else i've been a part of has been creating it and that is absolutely what i've always wanted to do and so when i say it's everything i mean that like i live for going into rehearsal and getting the new pages for things and i love working with writers and the synergism that happens between if the director's right and the music director's right and the music's right and every, you know, I love when all the pieces come together because A, that happens in theater anyways. You can do any show, Little Shop, Into the Woods, whatever, and things are gonna be crazy and they always start to come together and then Tech Week, they come together. But when it's an original show, there's this added element of, but what if, but what if we do, but what if that always is happening? And I mean, I, I'm probably guilty of trying to put in a little too many what ifs towards the end, but like, that's you know that's where it's the most creative to me um is when you get to see something through from an initial read through to where it's in everybody's imagination reading at a t table and you can see you know when the cast is right like okay cool yeah like this thing is this is right and then maybe you get it up on its feet and it's like, wow, that's that's so much fun. We did that, that one workshop. You always hope to be a part of it again. And then so when you get that call, you're like, oh, wow, great. They didn't hate me. And so then you go back in and there's new stuff. And it's basically like, it's like watching, it's almost like being a part of a TV show where you come back, you're the same characters and maybe things are new or maybe there's something learned or maybe whatever. And it's just that, hope of maybe one day we're all going to get to do this like maybe one day we're going to get to like do this on a whatever and then so the sparkle that everyone has in those situations is always um is always um like 
beautiful to me because everybody's always so excited to show the show when it's original. When there's an audience, when you get that audience and it's an original show and you're showing things for the first time, it's like, oh my gosh, that's when you know. Like in previews, oh my gosh, that's when you know. You're like, oh my gosh, this show's bad. Or like, this show's, people are going to love it. Anyway, but it's, it's magical that first, you know, the, the, the only show I kind of have really that's gone to a production that I've really been a part of was Beatsville like that. And it was really cool to get to be a part of the show. That was like, I can't believe these characters are coming to life. You know, it's, it's an honor. It's an honor to get to do that. Well, and it sounds like it's really, you're putting so much of yourself into it that when you do finally see an audience for whatever stage it is, it's like you're revealing a part of your soul and you're like, please like my soul. Yeah, I mean, that's that's absolutely part of the uh, thing is like when it's an original thing, like everybody's on the line a little bit, you know, like everybody's like, what is it? Well, I hope they like everything. Cause you know, when you're doing Annie, People like Annie and it's like, what are they going to, are they going to like the direction you've chosen or these actors? Cause these are the things you can change about Annie, right? You just the vibe you go with or whatever it is. But like when it's new, it's like, what is anything? People's eyes are so, you know, laser focused that it is, it's always great to find a good group of people that like center themselves or had some sort of leader. That's like, who cares what everybody says? We're just here for those three investors. You know what I mean? It's like that kind of, thing but it's it's i don't yeah it's what i live for man that's like truly like what i feel i was like born to do <laughs> excellent i love that that's so larger than life that's so hercules this is where i'm meant to be yeah <laughs> yeah I feel like I remember seeing, I watched a bunch of past interviews that you've done to prep for this moment, gotcha. and which is so much fun. I love doing that. It's one of the best parts of my homework, of my research. And I remember you talking about you're writing something with a best friend, sci-fi related. Can you talk yeah. about that? Um, yeah, I mean, like we're, we're still writing it. I'm not gonna give anything away. And it's something that has been growing over, a period of time but we have like a, i'm writing the i'm writing a slew of sci-fi geared fantasy things with my best friend kelly who lives in hollywood but she's having a baby right now so like you know it's on me right now but so it's still in the works yeah it's still happening very exciting and hopefully hopefully soon something's gonna happen with one of the things that's all we need to know. The the possibility that we could yeah. be getting something keeps us on the edge of our seats. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope people like it, but whatever. So this is the part of the interview where I like to ask if there are any nonprofits or charities you'd like to shout out. Um, The Actors Fund. I love them. They are wonderful for actors and everyone involved in the industry alike. They take care of their own. Yeah. So I love them. Yes. Yes, definitely. The Actors Fund. And I'm going to add to that the Next Generation Project. My friend Sis is doing amazing work for Black and Brown trans and getting them food and opportunities and just really, really great stuff. So if you have any questions, you can find them at the TNG Project online. So, uh, yes, big fan. Always like to, it's always good to shout out your friends and what they're yeah, doing. Yeah, of course. Where can everyone find you on social media? And is there anything that you came into today wanting to make sure to say to your fans? Oh, um, every, I'm across all social media boards. I am at Max Crumb, which is just M A X C R U M N. Um, and to my fans, to anyone watching, I just craved. I crave that you just stick with me through all the things I like to try. I, I hope you enjoy that because I'm never really just one thing or in one niche. I like to have many of those things. So I hope you just enjoy the ride, buckle up, and uh, it's going to be fun. I mean, it's just, we do a lot here. We do a lot here. And that's it. Just thanks for all the, like, love and support, too. I mean, that's kind of, I wouldn't be where I am without peeps like you guys. So it's awesome.
I know your fans, including myself, love you so much and love love this journey for you. Thanks. Yeah, and it's fun. It's fun to see where the journey goes and to see you taking different avenues and seeing, oh, maybe I do like this and maybe I prefer to stick in this realm, but by trying these new different avenues, whether it's TV or writing or musicals or plays or, you know, there's so many different things that as a creative you're doing, it's really fun to see where life takes you. Oh, thank you. That means a lot. That means a lot. You want an engaged audience. So, you know, I appreciate that. That's nice to hear. Definitely. And so I, I've been doing all these different journeys and I want to let y'all know about BOA Show, the podcast. It's been so much fun. I turned these interviews into a podcast and the most recent interview was Jelani Remy. Yes. I love Jelani. Me too. So yeah, y'all can find that on any social media or podcast platform, whatever words, anywhere you find it. That's great. And this interview will remain on forever, ever, ever. So if you're watching this in the future, hello, future. I hope it's treating you well. Yes, me too. <laughs> so on that note, I want to let y'all know, mask up. Got my Town mask right here. Always have at least one with me. Where <laughs> I didn't prep you for this, so don't worry if you don't have your prop. <laughs> I also support masks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wear a mask. Be safe. Take care of yourselves. Take care of one another. Be kind to yourselves. And thank you Give so your much. Dog a treat. <laughs> no, Slim. <laughs> Give your dogs treats, please. <laughs> <laughs> take them on walks yes, yes. Them. this is what it's all about <laughs> oh. thank you so much for having me this was so cool thank you and thank y'all for watching y'all are the best have a great day and see you at the show <laughs>